little bit of background is um, related to the power of the media to construct ideas about sport, gender, and race, and abilities. It's been well documented the past 25 years from the seminal research of scholars like Margaret Duncan in 1988, Dr. Mary Jo Kane in 1989, um, who explored the meanings of gender differences in sport photographs to the examination of race, racial representation by Lumpkin and Williams, Douglas, and now to sport and disability media research by Shell and Rodriguez, Chance and Gilbert, and most recently in 2009, Chang and Crossman. While the media serve to reinforce and reproduce existing norms and attitudes, they also play a significant role in the transmission of dominant ideas, social heritage from one generation to the next especially in the perpetuation of images of gender difference and gender inequality. In sport media, male athletes receive significantly more coverage than their female counterparts. They are portrayed and present, presented most often as competent athletes. This unequal practice not only advantages males, but also promotes the idea that males are valued more than females in sport and that real sport is done by boys and men, not girls and women. Sport media research on athletes with disabilities echoes the above, as athletes with disabilities receive far less coverage than athletes without disabilities. There is even less coverage of female athletes with disabilities, and when the media do include disability sport, the focus has been on their disability, pity, or overcoming odds not on their ability as athletes. In sum, past research affirms that female athletes and athletes with disabilities have been marginalized in ways that male able-bodied athletes have not. When I speak of marginalization in sport, the work of Karen DePaul and her colleagues comes to mind. Their 1993 theoretical construct guides this research. The construction of sport is centered around how we view the body and ability is at the center. According to DePaul, and I quote, and I'm sorry this says 1997, it was originally done in 1993. Um, according to DePaul, ability means, and I quote, able, and implies a finely tuned able body, unquote. DePaul and her colleagues propose this framework for analyzing marginality and sport. Three overlapping concentric circles embody three socially constructed ideals, masculinity, physicality, and sexuality. DePaul and her colleagues define masculinity in terms of traditional European-American, able-bodied, Judeo-Christian, heterosexual image of masculinity, identified by traits such as aggression, independence, strength, and courage. Physicality is represented by able-bodied physical ability or prowess. And sexuality is defined as a socially expected and accepted view of sexual behavior that includes being sexually active and heterosexual. All others who do not fit within these three constructs are marginalized contained and treated differently in sport. Female athletes and athletes with disabilities are some of the people left on the outside, marginalized by these constructs in which they do not fit. Excuse me. If you've been in any of my classes, you know this framework. <laughs> and it has guided this research. While women and people with disabilities have fought for inclusion and challenged the male hegemonic sport model, through increased opportunities and participation in sport, the social reality is that the media's treatment of them has been suspect. It has not been fair. Chance and Gilbert, 2001, suggest that female athlete with a disability is sub subjected to threefold discrimination, not fitting into the social categories or constructs laid out by DePaul and her colleagues. In this res research, we examined the media's treatment of athletes with disabilities during the 2008 Paralympic Games. I think it's time to review a little bit about the Paralympic Games. 
Um, the Paralympic Games were originally started by Sir Ludwig Gutmann at Stoke Mandeville Hospital. And the idea was to have competitions involving World War II vets with spinal cord injuries. So the first games were in 1948 in Stoke Mandeville, England. Since then, um, the, the games have increased cross country and became an international movement. And in 1960, the first Paralympic Games were held at the same site as the Olympic Games. And since then, the Paralympic Games have grown from 400 athletes initially to this recent Paralympic Games 4,000 um, for the Summer Games in Beijing from 146 countries. <coughs> the original classifications um, and um, Abilities of the athletes have changed over the years in terms of where they play and who they, who they compete against. And currently, we have spinal cord inju in injuries, amputees, cerebral palsy, palsy, intellectual disabilities, visual impairments, wheelchair, and other physical impair impairments. I think it's important to identify what the IPC says about the Paralympic Games. I quote, the Paralympics are elite sport events for athletes with a disability. They emphasize, however, the participants' athletic achievements rather than their disability. So I think it's important to keep that in mind as we go through this research. These were the um, sports held during those Paralympic Games in 2008. The ones on the left are sports in which